Okay, we've got most of the parts primed now. Um, but one thing I do need to do is do a little bit of a light block test. There's many ways of doing it. This is what I tend to do. So here's the engines, for example. We want the light to show out of the engines, but not through the side. So I'm taking it up to a very bright light here. And yeah, there's a little bit there, actually. A little bit of uh, light you can see through the side walls of the plastic. So need a few more coats still. Because those bulbs, when they go in there, are going to be bright. Um, show you on another piece as well. This is how I do it. This is part of the fuselage. Um, so again, up to bright light. And as you can see there, yeah, you can still see light coming right through that fuselage. So we've got a bit of a way to go yet. Now the LEDs that I'm going to use aren't obviously going to be as bright as this thing, but it's a good test. If I can block the light from that, then I know I'm going to be safe to block the light from. Yeah, any of these inside. Hi all, it's Grev here at moviemodels.co.uk. Just a quick update on the Viper Mark I build. Um, we've got quite a lot of uh, light blocking done here now. We've got uh, um, everything's primed up, uh, blackened on the inside. Uh, I did it to, uh, a coat of black on the outside as well actually. I don't know if you can see there, but the black primer on the outs, uh, giving it a coat of black primer under the, the top coat, or this is actually just a grey primer on top. Um, but there's a nice little effect you can achieve there where the, the black coat of primer underneath has sort of pre-shaded everything. So you've got a nice, you know, beautifully clear panel gaps or panel lines there. So I'm going to work on that a little bit when I do the final the final paint job. It just beautifully shows up those panel gaps and just really uh, accentuates them and shows them up nicely. Um, but I've done tons and tons of light blocking, uh, especially in the engine bay here, um, so absolutely nothing is going to leak out of there. And um, what we're going to do is we've got, uh, here's the end cap. Now what they do on this model is you've got the clear uh, inserts, so what we can do with the aid of our little ball cube here That goes in there like so. So you've got your clear parts mounted up inside the engine, uh, at the ends of the engine here, um, which will show a nice bit of light through. Um, and a little test I was going to do, so Stuart, if you're watching this, this is uh, the option we're going to be looking at, is uh, I've got some uh, bright white LEDs, cool LEDs here. So there is actually, and this is quite neat, I don't know if I can show you, so if I can zoom in, right in the centre of each clear part, there is a little, a little divot, a little sort of hole, and that's almost the same radius as the end of the LED. So my thinking is, I make a little, a little jig or something to hold these in place, and actually fix them so that they are. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but the LED will be right inside right inside the centre of that little divot. So you've got some nice, actually the camera's overexposing, but you'll get some nice glare through there. And there's a, there's a bit of detail, you know, you'll see, you'll see some of the detail in the others, but with some nice power in there as well. And it looks quite nice from all the angles. If you, get, if you look straight on, you get some nice lens flare. Um, there you go, that again gives you an idea of what the sort of effect you get. There you go, there's the old JJ Abrams lens flare. So yeah, so that's what the, uh, the engines are potentially going to look like. Um, got a little, uh, a little chap sitting up here, here's the little, little pilot, he's not finished yet, needs a bit more work, but I'm um, trying to get the uh, uniform as close as possible to how it should be. And he'll fit fit in the cockpit. And if I've got this right, oops, sorry, got this right. The joystick actually does go down into the into the floor area there. Now uh, needs a bit of tidying up around the helmet. Needs the gold buckles painting in. Um, needs a bit of tidying up generally, but he's coming on. Ignore the eyes. It's just a experiment that went wrong so I'm going to paint over those and do the eyes again. Not need to get better better result in the eyes. So that's our little um, pilot chap. 
Now, a uh, question here for you, Stuart. I'll probably email you, um, but if you do get to see this, I've got an option here. There's quite a bit of detail in that cockpit. We've got a screen, which we can cut that out and put something behind with a little decal that comes in the kit. And then we've got all the other controls. Now, I can do a nice paint job on some of those, and we can hack some holes in there and put some little slots in there and things. Maybe even bring some fibre optics up, I'm not sure. But basically, we can, we can do the inside like I did on the Viper you've already got. And for anyone else, that's the two Vipers that I made last year, the Mark II and the Mark VII. Um, but the other option, if I can track down some paragraphics, um, uh, photo etched parts, then basically we can cut a lot of that out and have some really, really super sharp, clear edges. Uh, I had a look on eBay the other day. I might have to go to one of the, the modelers' websites. So uh, I'll let you know a cost on that. Stuart, if you want that. So basically the option is uh, I can cut out some holes in the screen, I can light this the way I did the other one you've got, or I can try and get some paragraph paragraphics um, uh, inlays and uh, make it a, a, bit, a bit of a neater job, get some nice edges and things. So the choice is yours. Um, obviously the uh, photo etch parts will look better, but they uh, add to the cost a bit. So that's uh, one of the choices we've got. Right. Other than that, I think that's about it for now. Um, I'll give you a bit more of an update when we're a bit a bit further along, but uh, that's pretty much for now. So uh, I shall uh, check in with you later. Okay, a bit of an update on the Viper Mark One. Um, I've been doing a little bit of work on the uh, cockpit, cut out the screens and uh, some holes there, as you can see so that we can uh, pop some lights in behind. Lots of um, light blocking on there so there's no light leaking through anywhere we don't want it to. Uh, so, um, so we've got some little beginnings of some instrumentation there. Uh, pilot, uh, I think you've seen before. Um, once he's sat in there there we go, so that'll give you an idea where the light will shine through, sort of a screen and have some switches all around him. Uh, might add a few more. Um, what I'll do is I'll have a look on the uh, internet for um, shots of the inside of that cockpit to try and see if I can get the right colour lights in the right places. So that's that bit. Um, we've got uh, what I'm doing here actually is I've put some masking tape just behind the uh, slot. Uh, this model comes with a stand and there'd be a slot uh, as you can see there when those two halves go together. There's a, there's a slot for the stand there which lines up with a slot there as well but I'm not going to use the slot in the normal stand, I'm going to make a telescopic tube stand with a wire coming down through it. So what I've done is, to fill the hole, uh, just very simply, put some tape behind it. In fact, you can see where the slot was. You can see the little indentation there. But uh, just some tape to hide it, to hold it from behind, and then just start building up some layers of filler until that's all filled. Uh, and this is obviously the engine unit. Um, which we'll have. What I've actually decided to do is I've been experimenting with this and we've got a clear part for the engines but the LEDs, what I've done is I've, I've drilled a hole basically I can just rest that there Oops. oh there we go um, right, I've drilled some holes in there so that the LED fits nicely, a 5mm LEDs, 5mm holes, and the LED fits just in the centre there. But then all the light is before the transparency, and it looks kind of cool if there's some light behind it. So what I'm going to do is going to be three, uh, three bulbs in the centre of the engine for the real hot spots, but then I'm going to have a couple more bulbs, maybe even another three, I'm not sure, I'm not going to experiment. But I'm going to have some bulbs behind, so you get that kind of effect where the light comes through. So there's 
there's a hot there's a there's a big hot light in the center but there's also going to be some some light behind the rest of the transparency as well so that's the plan so there'll be three bulbs in the in the engines themselves plus a couple more up inside this part the engine compartment which will provide a bit of backlight to them as well um, and the the nice thing about that is you can experiment with different colors or maybe even a bit of a flickering bulb as well so uh, I'll have a little, a little play with that um, we've got the front of the engine assembly just with the intakes glued in for now um, that will be the other, the other part of that sub assembly obviously that goes uh, that's going to go onto the front of that and then the whole thing's going to mate up with with the front of the uh, fuselage so let's see if I can give you an idea what that's going to look like not very easy to do with one hand especially if it's your left hand and you're right handed right there we go so that's the cockpit in place and with a bit of light showing on it you can see some detail hopefully yeah and what we'll do is we'll have some LEDs underneath which will light through the screen uh, and light through the uh, the instrumentation panel there so we've got some some colored light or some yeah some colored light um, there's a little decal for the screen so I'll make a little bit of transparency up to go behind there there isn't the kit doesn't come with it it's just a blank or rather it's just a solid screen so I'll put a bit of transparency with a decal on that so that the light will shine through and uh, that's about where we are at the moment so a little bit more done um, I'll uh, give you another update when I'm a bit further along ball cubes not far off finished I haven't done much to it lately to be honest um, I just need to get a stand going um, and while I'm at it I'm going to get the shuttle which lights up as well um, the windows light up on that so I'm gonna just finish that off put it on a on a box stand like these so they've got a tube with a switch just makes them look a little bit neater and uh, that's about it so I'll uh, see you next time okay I've um, mixed up a little darker grey here and uh, starting to paint the inside of the cockpit which is a pretty close colour to uh, what you see on the show I've also started a bit of shading on the engine exhausts and on this is just pre-shading really around the, uh, the mechanical bits and pieces in around the, uh, the engines there. Uh, the idea is that um, that'll just have a little bit of shading, a little bit darker than uh, than the rest of the rest of the hull. Okay, I've just had some LEDs delivered. Uh, these are five mil bright white or cool white. LEDs uh, and they're going to fit in the holes that I've drilled in the engines uh, to provide the, the main point of light and then there's going to be some more additional light behind them so that the, the back of the transparency glows nicely um, so I've just uh, pre-stripped them I'm going to wire them all together now and test them okay they've now been uh, wired together so what we're going to do now is put them on a power supply just to give them a little test it's never easy to do this one-handed in fact I will do it two-handed okay there we go and we've now got three ooh, three nice bright white LEDs and they're going to be our three engines and I'll uh, fit those in we'll give those a little test see what they look like okay I've just popped the three LEDs into the back of the transparency and now we've got our three way nice glowy engines okay just as a another further test what I've done is I've put the exhaust around the end of the engines there 
Oh, one of the LEDs has fallen out. Hold on. Let's grab him and put him back in there. So now they're all falling out. Okay, all back in again. Actually, my eyes are starting to go now through looking into the. They're a bit too bright to look into, so uh, there we are from a, a bit of a different angle. But they'll give a nice effect when they're on the back of the on the back of the model. And speaking of the rest of the model, um, I've uh, repainted the cockpit. A little bit lighter, it was a bit too dark before, going to add some detail yesterday, uh, later on today, and uh, started to put a little bit of pre shading and uh, internal detail. Yes, the engine intakes that's I've sprayed that all white inside now. This is the obviously where the air engines are going to go, and the idea of spraying it white is that any light that reflects back in will help it really make the most of those. LEDs in the engine, as you can see there, it really, really throws the light back out of the engines. Uh, don't worry about the light gaps because there'll be a fin going in the top of there, will be one of the wings that goes in there. So that's it. And then obviously with the cockpit here, we're going to have some light showing through. We'll have some different colours, but that just gives you an idea. how that's going to work. Going to make a little transparency and put a, a nice little screen on there. Okay, the LEDs have now been set, hopefully pretty straight, into the transparency for the engine, uh, or the engines, and um, I've used five minute epoxy, it's had about ten minutes now, seems to be setting quite nicely. Um, so quick test, 12 volts, and there we go. So we've now got we've now got some some nice lighty up engines. Right, okay, a little bit further along now. Um, we've made up the engine module, which is uh, all wired up in there. And I've just fitted the exhausts to the engine bays. So all I've got to do now is hit the power button on the power supply, and with a bit of luck, we'll have some working engines. Yeah, and there we go. Yeah, three nice sparkly engines. I'm going to put a bit more light in there as well, so you don't have too much of a hot spot in the middle. But obviously the camera overexposes a little bit, but uh, it gives you a pretty good idea what they what they look like. In fact, if I turn the voltage down, that's at 12 volt. If I turn them down, there you go. You can see them. That's how it actually is working. It's 5 volts, 6, 7, 8. about 11, it's just under 12 volts. Okay, just a little update. Um, this is this is the little engine section i um, shown you before already, but uh, that's the, the module for the, the the back of the Viper, which is gonna, which houses the engines, and um, that is. There's now been running for about 12 hours. I've just got them running at uh, the 12 volt LEDs, although the rate for LED for uh, 12 volts. Pardon me. I've uh, got them running just on that 11.7. It shows you how much current they're draw, drawing as well. Very little current really. Um, so they've had about uh, I don't know 10, 12 hours. Before I seal them in, I usually leave them on for for quite some time. Make sure they're not going to you know not going to burn out early or anything. If the resistor values are uh, are wrong, then obviously the LED doesn't last very long. Um, but if the resistor values values are correct, then in theory you can get tens of thousands of hours out of them. So um, that's that.